Hey, what is up everybody and welcome to the College Info Geek Podcast, the internet's best show for students and a terrible resource for those looking to craft and bake the perfect souffle. Though we are talking about food today. We are talking about food today. We will be talking about some forms of cooking, but souffles will not be in them. Are you having fun stacking the coasters? I was, I was really close, but I'm afraid they're going to fall and make loud noises. That's probably what they're going to do. Well, wait, what if you stack them on top of this round coaster that will roll over the table? Ooh, that would be pretty good. Extra difficulty. Now, I used to stack a bunch of stuff at my previous job. I had like a ruler on another ruler, and it was really good. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like I need to be next to you with a stopwatch. Like it's my secret Timing talent. all the, the company time you steal. No, it's not my secret talent. People are way better than this. <laughs> anyway. That's true. Yeah, um, once I, I don't know why, but I was Googling like rock stacking. Yeah, people are reason. super good at that. And uh, I found a video on YouTube, and the first one, it was a guy stacking rocks in the river, and of course, he was like, I'm out here in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> I will go to him. Stacking rocks on a Tuesday afternoon. Nope, I don't have work to do. Yeah. I'm just stacking rocks. I'm a rock stacking artist. Maybe that's his job. You never know. I don't know. Anywho, a few weeks ago, we did an episode on our exercise routines and fitness habits and goals and whatnot. And we did say that we were going to follow that up with an episode about improving your diet. Um, So I have listed out eight different ways to improve your diet. And these are things that I think both of us have at least experimented with. Um, For the most part, I did have one on here that... Yeah, there's one where I'm like, I don't know anything. There's one on here that I think you do unwittingly. Uh, That's true. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Uh, I don't do it at all. But it's something that people keep asking me about and friends of mine have experience with. So we're going to talk about it. Cool. Um, But for people who want to start improving their diets, I think this is going to be a good episode. One thing that I'm going to say up front is we're not going to be talking about like specific foods you should eat. Or at least what I'll say is none none of the eight items on this list is about like you need to eat raspberries more often or something oh like that. yeah like it's soy not like, eggs meat good or bad we yeah. don't want I'm, it's not eight superfoods that's, that's gonna take 17 years exactly and i always feel weird suggesting specific foods as like the crux of a video maybe i'll talk about what i eat or something like that but i always feel weird suggesting specific foods because everyone has a different dietary philosophy everyone has different needs some people get all their protein from tofu and quinoa and pea protein and some people eat meat and some people eat fish yeah i don't know just cultures have survived for quite some time yeah it turns out when you just eat good food that isn't like loaded with sugar and and simple carbs and you get your uh, micronutrients then you're usually good to go yeah so what I want to focus on in this video or not this video well this isn't a video actually it is a video it is also a video I can say a video but it's a podcast first and foremost what I really want to focus on in this podcast is some ways that you can improve your diet, have more energy on a daily basis and be able to get work done, be able to exercise more effectively that aren't hard. So a lot of these things on my list are actually little hacks that make eating healthier easier Yeah. rather than saying like, oh, you need to have a handful of almonds a day. Though a handful of almonds a day is actually a pretty good thing to eat. And fittingly enough, I actually have my Nutribullet smoothie so on the table. a handful of almonds in there? there That'd is... be pretty good if you just toss some in there. Actually, I think you could do that. Would, your, put... brother, would your brother break them? Yeah, it would. Hmm. The Nutribullet specifically says like it, it has the ability to break up nuts and seeds and things oh. like that. Well, that's cool. I don't put almonds in there. I do put chia seeds and flax seeds, but that's number two on the list. So yeah. I'm not going to talk about What's number one? It number one is to stop... Drinking soda and sugary drinks, you dingus. I I remember soda. I know you want to say, Papa Bless, put the hands together and crack open a cold soda pop, but it's bad for you. And I say this as a former, not just soda addict, but a former energy drink addict, which I think is even worse, because not only are you loading your body up with soda from a can that is usually, I don't know, 33% bigger than a soda can, or maybe 25% bigger. I don't know oh, yeah. math here. Yeah. They're always 16 ounces instead of 12. Uh, but it's also just building extra caffeine dependence because there's extra caffeine in it. And when I was in college, uh, there were times when I would have two or three NOSs or Monsters or I don't know what the other brands are a day. How's your heart rate? Were you dead? I do actually, I do remember there was a guy who tweeted me because I, I tweeted out, I need help breaking this energy drink addiction and someone tweeted me back and they were just like, have fun with that irregular heartbeat in 10 years, bro. (laughs) And I think he was like, 
joking or it was I, I guess it wasn't a serious tweet, but that actually kind of jarred me a bit. But yeah, it sounds like it sounds like one of those like, Haha, yeah, that sucks, but it's probably true. Let's make fun of it. Yeah, it's like it is true. Yeah, it's pretty but, bad. But and I know you also used to drink a lot of soda. Yeah, I used to Maybe drink a lot of soda. So that's many true. Energy drinks, but uh, not a lot, a lot of, of energy drinks because they were really effective. So every once in a while, I'd have like an amp, and I would oh, be able yeah. to stay up really well mm-hmm. at the time. And I never got adjusted to them. I drank a lot of Coca Cola though. I didn't even drink them for energy. It was literally like, in my brain, they were more exciting than a soda. They were like the most exciting drink because I was like, oh, it's got a lot of caffeine and stuff, and it's a fun, flavorful, carbonated drink. So every time I had to do a lot of homework or I had to go to my boring internship, I would just sort of make it better by buying an energy drink. Mm. I think a lot of people do this. And in fact, uh, something that several adults in my life told me when I was in college is that a lot of people tend to graduate they get an office job and they start gaining a lot of weight for two reasons. One, you're in a one cubicle for eight hours a day, whereas in college, you're at least darting back and forth between buildings on campus and you have a lot of walking in your life. And two, people discover that no one is going to say anything if you buy a giant bag of M&Ms or whatever and just keep it in your desk in your cubicle. And then you just get bored and you tend to munch on it all day long. Love boredom food. So, yeah, it's boredom food. And you have to keep that stuff out of your cubicle. Anybody who is listening to this who is a professional in your life, get the M&Ms out of your desk. Eat lunch when you want to eat lunch. And if you're going to have snacks in your desk, I don't know, make it like almonds or something. But even then, you don't, you don't want to be eating like a zillion That's almonds. That's true. If you eat a lot of almonds, you're still going to have like a ton of calories in there. Yeah. You don't want to eat a ton of anything. So just, I don't know, have so, like a bottle of well, water on your desk. I had snacks, but like I packed... You know, I had a little, like, bento mm-hmm. thing. And one little compartment, maybe I'd put something stupid in there. There you go. But that way, I only had this small amount at once. I wouldn't, like, yeah. keep anything in my desk because that's... So I guess that's a little bonus tip. It's not on the list. But if you find yourself boredom eating, try to cut out any ability for you to snack during the day. I just I just don't ever yeah. I work. And if I want a handful of almonds, I'll go get it. But I never have food at my desk just, like, eating while working. I think that should be separated. But with the soda and sugary drinks, how did you stop drinking them yourself? I, that was so long ago that I can't say the specific steps or okay. anything. I just got into like tea and water mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I just kind of stopped drinking soda at some point. I'm not used to it anymore and find it gross if I drink more than like a fourth of the can. That's yeah. usually enjoyable. I like a fourth of the can of like game fuel. It brings me back. But as soon as yep. I'm past that, I'm like, I can't. I I paid for the whole can, yes. But three-fourths of that is just trash. And a uh, four-ounce can of Coke would be good. Yeah, that would be great. But I also, a long, long, long time ago, discovered uh, LaCroix, the sparkling yeah. water stuff. And now there are a bunch of brands of it. Actually, the Waterloo brand is my favorite now. It's got the oh yeah, that one's best, good. best scents, mm-hmm. which is basically where a lot of the flavor comes from. Yeah. But sparkling water was a big deal because unlike tea and stuff, I didn't have to do anything to yep. make it. And also it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. I like this, the feeling of the carbonation sometimes. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. For me, a soda or an energy drink has three different purposes. One, it tastes good, quote unquote doesn't taste good to me anymore, but it did at the time. Two, the caffeine, I guess, could be a benefit for some people. And then three, it's just the novelty of a fun, sparkling, carbonated drink. And yeah. that was the big one for me. So when I discovered LaCroix as well, possibly through you, maybe through Anna, uh, that was kind of the kicker. Where I was like, oh, hey, that is a great replacement for soda. I can drink coffee if I want a little bit of caffeine, and then I can just stick with that all day. Yeah. And that was good to go. I really don't think it takes too long either for nope. soda to start to taste kind of gross. Like mm-hmm. if you if you cut out a lot of the sugar in your life, it won't take more than like a month or two for you to at least start noticing some effects where you're like, that's really, was it always that sweet? Yeah. It's just incredible how much we've gotten used to it. Yeah, something that blows my mind because your body really does sort of wean itself off of that sugar dependency and then it does start to taste different and not as good yeah something that blows my mind is this is legit like people there are so many people out there in the world that are literally two weeks away from changing their 
life expectancy from like 70 years to like 90 years. What do you mean by two two weeks away? As in, if you had two weeks to change your habits, and it would take it would take effort for two weeks. Oh, I but see. But after two weeks, you would change your habits, and then you would have a less effortful time eating well, not drinking soda all the time, maybe adopting exercise habits. You would live 20 years longer. Yeah. And you would live better for those 20 it's years. It's just some habit building. But it's like a rolling two weeks, and so many people are never able to get themselves through that two weeks and make that habit change. And maybe it's different than two weeks. I just like to use two weeks as an illustration. But seriously, like if you went without soda for two weeks, I bet you at the end of that, you would feel less of a craving for it. Yeah. You probably feel a craving after a week still, but after two weeks, you're starting to wean yourself off that dependency. Well, it's extra hard because obviously we have to break the habit and that's mm -hmm. difficult, but also we're overwhelmed. We're thinking about so many other things. And food is like one of the most stubborn things yeah. for people like, you can take anything from me, but my food choices. People are just proudly like, yeah, I'll keep eating raw cookie dough till I die from it. <laughs> like, you just don't even care. Yeah. Whereas exercise, maybe it sounds, yeah, that sounds reasonable, but you're not touching my food culture. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just such a big part of your life, you know? Like, yeah. And when, for a long time, like when I, when I started that original, I'm going to follow a plant-based diet for a month because I grew up picky and didn't eat vegetables. I felt so good that month that I kept being vegetarian for two years, but it was so hard yeah. because literally like every part of the day is, is like, oh, hey, I want to get a snack. Wait, what? Oh, well, I can't have that one. Okay, well, I'll go get it. No, <laughs> I won't get that, I guess. What can I eat here? And this was before Iowa State had a lot of super great options. So I was yeah. like, I guess I'll have like uh, an apple. Yep. I'll have an apple today. I should come prepared <laughs> tomorrow. And it's yep. it's really inconvenient when you live surrounded by a culture that's eating a bunch of stuff that's bad for you because yeah. that's what's there. I remember you talking about how difficult it was for you to go home for holidays oh, with yeah. that diet because your family is just the opposite of that. Yeah. And there's nothing in the house you oh, can Oh, I eat. still have, like, nothing. I don't care about Thanksgiving anymore. I'm just like, yeah, I, but I don't want to eat most. I'll eat, like, the sides. Give me yeah. some green beans in a roll, thanks. That's literally all I want. Don't feel bad. Yep. I don't even like turkey that much anyway. Yeah, like, I, never, me, I never cared are, much for, like, poultry always seemed a little dry to me. One year, Anna's family did a ham for Thanksgiving, and I was like, this is so much better. Why do we eat turkey? <laughs> I don't understand Because it. big turkey. I, it is big turkey and big food. Everything is a conspiracy. This episode is actually sponsored by Big Food. The conspiracy is, it goes deeper than you think. Every time you eat, you're supporting them. Yep. Every single time you eat, big food gets bigger. Oh, no. What, I, that's kind of true. It, it it's is. It's a little it's less like true, but it's dumb. And evil than we're making it out to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so one thing I'll note here with this whole habit change thing, I haven't had a craving for a soda in years. Um... The only time I'll ever drink soda is maybe like every once in a while on a plane, I like to have a Coke because they're going to pour you like four ounces of Coke into an iced glass. Oh, yeah. They'll and do, like, they'll oh, do it's a like, little bit. It's like it tastes good for that amount of time. But then anything more than four ounces. Soda shots. Awful. Yep. Uh, what I have more trouble dealing with is alcohol. I don't have a problem with it to the point where I will get drunk or anything like that, but I think it tastes good, especially when it's like whiskey. Uh, and I do like beer and wine as well. And it gets really easy to just like default to having it for dinner every night. It's like, oh, we're just going to have wine with dinner. You, it, you just don't even notice that you're doing it. You don't even notice. And then you don't even notice you're having like two drinks a night. And then you, you tally it up and you're like, that's like 14 drinks a week. That's like coming close to the definition of an alcoholic. Uh, and, you know, like some people out there are like, I don't know, proud of being high functioning al alcoholics, but it's poison. Well, that's and just another example of people don't want to quit their food exactly. culture. They would rather embrace a, something that's not good for them proudly than do anything. Yeah, I love how there's people out there that are, like, proud of their ability to function in uh, in the light of their bad choices. And they're, like, more proud of that than the potential ability to quit making the bad choices altogether. Like, I think this is why people love to brag about how drunk they got. Well, this is similar to... I was to so messed up last night, and, yeah, I was still able to do parkour... Like, yeah, but you could have done better parkour if you weren't messed up. Well, <laughs> outside of alcohol, it's it's basically the same thing with the, like, you should see me before I have my coffee. Yeah. I'm totally, I'm, I'm actually addicted to caffeine. Please, <laughs> please help me. I'm an awful person. And I don't have any adenosine receptors and I can't function. <laughs> 
So it's so funny. Uh, Anna and I are similar in that regard, where it just becomes very easy to pour a couple of glasses of wine for dinner. So uh, beginning of or no, I think it was it was mid April this year. We just were like, all right, thirty days, none of it, just nothing. We were, we were driving to the mountains and we were talking about it, and we were just like, you know what? There's literally no downside to just doing thirty days cold turkey. You're not saying I'm a teetotaler for life. I can never experience like a tasty drink ever again. I can never go out for drinks. It's just 30 days, you know? Yeah. So 30 days. And then we went on vacation. And on vacation in San Diego, we had drinks with dinner at restaurants sometimes. But we came back and we realized like we didn't have cravings for wine with dinner anymore at all. Hmm. So we just came back and we were like, all right, how about this? We just don't drink at home. And did you have to replace it with anything? Like, no. did you have any drinks it or just nothing? No, I just drink tea and water and coffee and my smoothies. That's like it. There's no soda. Cool. We don't drink at home. I, I We don't drink juice because juice is really sugary. Like, oh, yeah. Drinking a I, glass of orange juice is like eating like 15 oranges. Yeah, so that's, I don't that's really buy the juice. difference between eating fruit and drinking it. But if you, yeah. if you get some orange juice, right, you mix it with some sparkling water just a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Then, then it's slightly sweetened like and uh, vitamin C. Yeah. Yeah. Virgin mimosa. I, I like healthier. to do that because otherwise the juice feels too sweet, but it's still yeah. nice. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's one way you could do it. It's just like go cold turkey for 30 days. I think that if you, you know, you make a commitment to 30 days off, it's fairly easy to stick to it, especially if you've got somebody who's doing it with you or at least is holding you accountable. And um, you could do like the spreadsheet thing where like you get someone like Martin to, uh, you know, bet a hundred bucks that you won't do it. Yeah. Something like that. So you have to pay them a hundred bucks if you do. Just find a way to go cold turkey from whatever you're kind of addicted to for a while. If you can, I mean, obviously serious addictions sometimes require help. I want to say that here because I don't want to be like, oh, if you're on some hard drug, you can just not do it for 30 days. Yeah. Like go get help in that well, case. Well, it's that easy. But if it's soda, like you can go 30 days without it. Yeah, well, if, if you live with somebody or, yeah. or your significant other drinks it a lot too, it would probably be useful for you to both do it at the same time. Because if yeah. you've ever like, uh, I don't know how many times, like if a couple has one person trying to quit smoking and the other person's constantly smoking around them, like you can't, Yeah, it's not going to work well. Yep. And I would say that's an example of another, that that is an example of an addiction that is harder to break. Yeah, so maybe yeah that one's definitely harder. That. But like just if, if people are like, all your friends are having fun drinking sodas next to you and you're like, I'm... Got water. Yeah. <laughs> Though I just sort of like make light of that. That's like kind of my quirk if I'm around like the friends oh, okay. that do drink sodas. And in high school, it was my like my quirk that I was the guy who got salad bar. And everyone else was getting oh, yeah. a la carte with pizzas and cookies and everything. And they were like, ha, you're the salad bar kid. Which is kind of funny because like nowadays adults would feel shameful about eating that kind of food. Yeah, I like. I really. It's interesting that it was. Ha ha! You're not gonna die sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I don't get it. Okay, let's move on to the second one here. Uh, the second one is try making smoothies. So this has been a really big thing in my life for the last maybe month. Um, I bought a Nutribullet, which is just one particular brand of personal blender. I know you have a blender that's like a ninja, right? I don't have that one oh, anymore. Oh, do you that? I actually also have a Nutribullet. Oh, okay. And before that, I was using a similar but smaller thing that was like Oster, Oster. I don't know how to pronounce their name because yeah. I don't care. But it's like a little $20 one instead gotcha. that I was using before. Well, according to the Sweet Home, which is the site I usually go to when I'm looking for like tech reviews and product reviews, I think they have a pretty good testing methodology. Even though they're very blatant about like the fact that the site exists to make affiliate money, they're super good about testing things and being objective. Okay. So I like them and the wire cutter. They're both the kind of the same company. Uh, so they recommended the Nutribullet and I was like, sounds good to me. Went out to Bed Bath & Beyond and got one. And I have just stopped making breakfast like in solid food form because I realized that with the other things I want to do in my morning routine and the time at which I want to start working, I just wouldn't make breakfast or I would like tend to go to Starbucks because I didn't want to get at the pan and cook and wait for the stuff over the stove to heat up and then cook and then wash the pan. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. With this thing, it takes me literally like five minutes to throw the ingredients in the, in the cup. And then I put it on the blender for like 30 seconds and then I can drink it right out of the cup. I don't have to pour it into anything else. So there's literally just one thing to wash. Yeah. 
Um, and I will note to people out there wondering, like, how do I drink these? On Amazon, there's this pack of glass straws you can buy. So you're not constantly, like, throwing away plastic straws and hurting the environment. These things, you just wash them. And I went with glass over the steel straws because I was told that the steel straws get really cold if you're drinking, like, your a tongue smoothie. might get stuck to it or something? Cause that'd not be... tongue stuck to it, but if you have sensitive teeth, this okay. straw might get really cold and then your teeth are not going to feel comfortable. And I feel that the glass doesn't transfer the cold quite as much to the outside of the straw. Well, it looks cool. And it looks cooler. Because it's see-through like the thing. So it looks like they came together. It looks cooler. It does look like they came together, though they didn't. And the bottle brush it comes with, when you are scrubbing the straw out, you can see if it's clean. Oh, with it gives you a thing straw, to clean the straw? They do, yep. Oh, that. I didn't think of that. That's a good and idea. And with the steel straw, you can't see in there. So you're just like, I guess it's clean, I hope. Yeah. With this one, you can actually see. So I highly recommend the glass straws. I got a pack of eight of them for like, I don't know, 10 bucks on Amazon or maybe even less. Uh, and this has just been my breakfast replacement. And I've come up with a, a regular combination of ingredients that basically is like the full package. Yeah. It gives me everything I need for like a bunch of the day. And I often sometimes will skip lunch. If I weren't trying to bulk up right now, I would skip lunch because of this. Hmm. Uh, so my smoothie recipe, because people have been asking me, is uh, either kale or spinach will be about, I don't know, a third of the cup up to the max line. And that's frozen kale or frozen spinach. Um, and I believe that both frozen kale and frozen spinach and any kind of those green leafy vegetables, if you buy them frozen, they have been blanched, which means they've been boiled quickly. So you're not eating raw spinach all day. You're essentially eating what's close to cooked spinach, but just frozen. Uh, and I've had some people DM me on Instagram about like raw spinach having some iron oh, yeah. blocking compound in it or something like that. Oh. So I think that we're good here because it's been blanched. And then I will do about a third of a banana, some strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries or blackberries, some combination of their those kinds of things. Um, two tablespoons of chia seeds, which have a ton of micronutrients and actually are pretty calorie heavy. And one tablespoon of flaxseed, which has some additional nutrients the chia seeds don't have. Um, four tablespoons of oatmeal, just for more calories. A giant glob of peanut butter, again for more calories and also some protein. And then a scoop of protein powder, as well as almond milk up to wherever the oatmeal is. Okay. Is that just rolled oats? Or? Yep, just your okay. old-fashioned rolled oats. Yep. Uh, no, I don't cook them. I just throw them in there, and I don't even notice they're there. Um, the almond milk I use is the unsweetened vanilla. So okay. I haven't tried other ones, but I would recommend not doing sweetened because you're probably getting the sugar from the uh, fruit already. And if you're not using, like, pure natural peanut butter that also has some sugar in it, if you're getting, like, natural Jif or something, uh, I may switch to the natural stuff to reduce that sugar load. I just don't have, well, I have, I have GIF to go through right now. Oh. And then you just blend it up. And in my opinion, it tastes pretty darn good. I've been drinking it for like a month now and I haven't gotten tired of them. And you can vary them up. Like I said, kale or spinach, or you could do collard greens. Um, you could do whatever fruit you want. You could throw nuts in there. You could do almond butter, or I think you can do like safflower butter or something like that. Hmm. Or I don't know. I'm unfamiliar. Or sunflower butter. Sunflower butter. Sunflower maybe. butter. I'm, yeah. I haven't bought it ever, but, but I know it's a thing. And I think so. I've calculated this up, and I haven't been super accurate about it. And maybe I'll be accurate about it in a video. But I'm pretty sure with everything I put in it, the shake ends up being about a thousand calories. About 600 of that is from the peanut butter because <laughs> I put a lot in there. That's so fair. I think everything else without the peanut butter is around 400. So you could make it as calorie dense or as light as you want, depending on your goals. Right now, my goal is to build lean mass. It is not to lose weight. I, my body fat percentage is pretty low, so I'm not worried about it. In fact, I've been eating like three big meals a day. Uh, but if you wanted to lose weight, cut out the oats, maybe do a little bit of peanut butter or sunflower butter or whatever, and you're good to go. And uh, then I just wash out the smoothie cup and I'm done. It's yeah. quick and I can just drink it while reading. I don't have to like try to use two arms for different tasks. So it's been pretty good. And is it something that you've been doing at all or not? I have been making a smoothie. It's not, it's not like that. It's not the kitchen sink smoothie? No, it's simpler than that. But largely the reason I'm doing it is because I really don't want to have to, th I'm like tired. I wake up, yeah. 
I don't want to think that hard. I don't want to try that hard to cook. And my ingredients are simpler, but my my goal largely is to give me a, an initial burst of protein, fat, and like carbs yep. to sort of get me going, especially because I'm going to work out yeah. pretty, within 20 to 30 minutes probably after I drink it. Mm-hmm. So I want some sort of fuel. Otherwise, I haven't given myself enough time after waking up for my like all the blood to be flowing right and for me to yeah. feel energetic already. So I want to get something in there so I don't just – What's I can't work out well if I have no energy. You know, I'll do like yeah. one pull up and I'll be like, yeah, I'm still tired. We're done. Yep. And I think some people can work out on an, on an empty stomach. Like, I mean, the human body is kind of built for that. Like yeah, built I, don't, for endurance. I don't do it. It doesn't work. But if you can give yourself energy for the workout, why not? Well, and if I wasn't drinking it before, I'd drink it after. So. Yeah. Um, and I drink mine before my workout, my morning routine right now, wake up, feed the cat, brush my teeth, make this and read, and then I go work out. So I've got that available as well. And then again, because I'm trying to bulk up, I'll come back and have another protein shake Oh, <laughs> at the moment. Okay. Uh, so I think I've gained like five pounds since doing this. So things are getting, there, there's some results coming in. Okay. Which is good. I remember it was, it was pretty funny. There was a kid on the YouTube channel who left a comment. And he was just like, one thing that perplexes me, Tom, you have all these habits that you stick to diligently and you're working out all the time. How are you not just totally jacked? And I was like, well, it's because well, I don't take in enough calories. That's oh, okay. why. <laughs> you know, you can work out all you want, but if you're not at a caloric surplus, you're not going to gain any weight. Yeah. You might get a little stronger, but you're just going to remain the same weight or lose weight. Uh, all right. So my third one here is to embrace meal prep. Uh, So meal prep is basically just prepping lots of meals ahead of time. So I think the biggest reason, in my opinion, the biggest reason why people eat unhealthily is because they are too lazy or do not have time to cook proper food. I think everyone out there, like the craving for junk food is definitely an issue, but I think what really tips people over the edge to having junk food as a habitual thing is that they don't make time or they don't have time, or they just they don't want to cook every single night, or they don't want to put in the effort required to obtain healthy food. Yeah. And a great way to get around the whole I don't want to cook every night thing is to take a day or two per week and make something huge, and then just put portions of it into Tupperware and put that in the fridge and have it ready to go. Now, would you do that for like every meal, or would it be like I'll meal prep this for lunches and this for dinners, or you could do what? it however you want. Um, a good person to follow on Instagram if you're into meal prep is Stacy Artisan, who is one of the writers for Nerd Fitness. Um, and I will just we'll have her link in the show notes because I don't know her her handle, but she has posted a lot of pictures of her meal prep process and how her fridge looks and everything. So a lot of times she'll just like put I don't know nine chicken breasts on an oven rack with spices or whatever and throw them in the oven and then make like a giant pot of green beans with seasons, a seasoning and like maybe some mashed potatoes. And then she's got these meal prep boxes and they each have like, I don't know, dividers or something like that. So she'll just have like 12 or 13 of those in her fridge. That's intense. Yeah. So I think for her, it's like Sunday is just a massive meal prep day. And then when you want food, you just grab it from the fridge, you pop it in the microwave and you're good to go. You don't have to put effort into it. And this is batching, right? So you only have to wash the pots once. You only got to wash the utensils once. You only got to chop vegetables once. So it ends up saving you a lot of time, regardless of the fact that you don't have to cook every night. Like you're just batching tasks, so it's more efficient. This week's episode of our show is brought to you by our friends over at Hover. And since we are talking about health, once you implement the tips from this episode, you are probably going to have a lot more energy during the day, which you can then apply to another problem, which is standing out in a crowded marketplace with lots of college grads and people looking for a job. And the greatest way to do that is to start building your personal brand. Figure out a way to communicate your skills, your experience, and your passions to the people who can hire you or work with you or who may be your colleagues in the future. And a great way to do that is to establish an online presence, which of course starts with a domain name. My domain name in particular is thomasjfrank.com. If you go to that, you're going to see my personal website. I also have tomfrankly.com because I wanted to get what my personal uh, handle is over on Twitter and Instagram as a domain as well. And I think this is something you should do 
as well. Even if you don't have a website right now, even if you don't have the intention to build one, you should at the very least secure a domain for yourself so you have it waiting for you whenever you do want to create, say, an online portfolio or a CV or resume website or even a love letter website to a specific company so you can apply to work for them in style and stand out from the crowd. And when it comes to getting that domain, the best place on the internet to find it is hover.com. They have a no frills, super easy experience that has no weird, annoying upsells. You can buy a domain in literally less than 30 seconds. I've done it in less than 30 seconds myself. And when it comes to choosing that domain, you've got over 400 different options. You've got the classics like your .com, your .net, your .me, which I would probably stick with when it comes to a professional domain, but if maybe you're running um, a nonprofit or if you have a band, there are tons of other custom domain extensions like .band, .ninja, .limo, so you have a ton of choice. Another great thing you can do with Hover once you do have your domain name is set up a personalized email address such as mine, thomas at collegeinfogeek.com, which is a little bit more professional than a Gmail or a Yahoo or a Hotmail. And if you want to build a website, they have a connect tool that makes it very easy to hook your domain up to different website builders like Squarespace and Shopify. So to grab your domain today and get 10% off of your first purchase at Hover, go on over to hover.com slash CIG. Once again, that is hover.com, H-O-V-E-R.com slash CIG to get your domain at the best place on the internet to buy domains and get 10% off of your first purchase. A big thanks to Hover for sponsoring this episode and being a supporter of our show. And let's get back into it. It. Uh, and I will also note on, on this item here, there's a company that I'm experimenting with right now called Freshly. So in the past, I've done a Blue Apron, which we thought would make cooking quicker, but as you and Ashley observed, it actually ended up making cooking take longer. It, it did seem like it took years. Because they send you complex meals, and then like there are instructions, but you're not really practiced. Well, if you're not at trained, everything. if yeah. you're like, I don't actually know that kind of cutting. Yeah. Te technique. So like they've, so. they've portioned things for you, but then it's like, oh, julienne these carrots. And you have to like spend 15 minutes Googling what did julienne means. It's not actually that efficient. So freshly, I think it's pretty similarly priced, but they're actually sending you basically like pre-cooked meals that you just pop in the microwave. So you're basically paying a company to meal prep for you. Um, so this is going to be an option for people that have a little more disposable income and that they that, that want to save even more time. So maybe for like a business owner or something like that. Uh, my friend Ryan does it. And the reason he does it is he's like, I just want to get the most out of my time as I can. And I view most meals as simply fuel. So if I can afford to pay for fuel, that doesn't take me a ton of time to make, but it's also really healthy and tastes decently good. I'm going to do it. And I think if you go on like one of their mid-tier plans, it ends up being like 10 bucks a meal. So, and when I was in the dorms, when we had the meal plan at the UDIC, I think it was $7 a meal. So something like that. this isn't a whole lot more expensive than having a college meal plan, maybe three bucks more. So it's not like you're eating out for every meal, but you can definitely get your per meal cost down far, far from that level if you are actually meal prepping yourself. Yeah. It's just, you're doing the effort. So what matters more to you at this particular time, your effort or your money and your time? Uh, but that's something to try out. And I haven't bought these yet, but I have noticed on Amazon that you can buy for pretty cheap this like huge pack of maybe 20 meal prep uh, containers, which is good because every time I go to Target and look at Tupperware, it's expensive. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could buy the really so cheap these, stuff. So are these kind of like almost bento like compartmented yeah. storage things? I think so. I think you can get those kind. Okay. We may be able to find them for the show notes. Uh, possibly the ones I was looking at were not compartmentalized, but I think I saw compartmentalized ones in the hmm. recommended or suggested items. That's cool. So maybe look into that as well. All right, number four. So this is the one that you unwittingly do a lot. Whoops. Uh, and I, but I maybe done. it's good. Tell me why. It's true, yeah. So number four is to try intermittent fasting. And this essentially is the practice of not changing what you eat, but when you eat it. So really the intermittent fasting is all about restricting the time at which you eat. So uh, for example, the most common intermittent fasting schedule would be the lean gains method, which is where you only eat between the hours of noon and 8 p.m. So you could call this maybe the 8-16 schedule. Eight hours a day is when you can eat and 16 hours a day is when you can't eat. 
Now that might seem like a lot of time to not be eating, but for eight of those hours, you're probably gonna be asleep. So if you're on the noon to 8 p.m. schedule, you're asleep until maybe six to 8 a.m. So basically you're just skipping breakfast and then you eat between noon and eight. So you can get two meals in there. You can get three meals in there if you wanna do intermittent fasting, but also still gain weight. And then by 8 p.m., you know, you're done eating and you go to bed in a couple of hours. Okay. So you're really only having to deal with maybe like four to eight hours a day of conscious waking time where you can't eat. Uh, and for this reason, a lot of people who talk about their experiences with intermittent fasting will say that it seems more complicated than following a diet at first, but it's actually a lot easier to stick with because you're not really trying to change what you eat. You're just restricting the time which you eat it. Um, and the reason that this works well is because people naturally tend to lose weight doing this. So this is specifically a recommendation for people who want to lose weight. There are other reported benefits, um, potentially living longer. And this goes back to the whole research showing that uh, caloric restriction and the fasted state actually result in more longevity. Hmm. Um, and we can get into that into a future episode because I don't have a link for more information here. Uh, some people have said it makes me feel more mentally clear, or clear. I can do better work. I don't know about that because this is something that I don't personally do. But the science behind intermittent fasting uh, at a basic level is that your insulin levels are high when your body's in a digestive state. And this can last eight to 12 hours after your last meal. And your body has a tougher time burning fat when those insulin levels are high. So, and I'm mm. sure there's gonna be someone in the comments that's like, you lost all the nuance on this, but this is what I've read at least. Uh, so when you get into that fasted state, maybe eight to 12 hours after your last meal, your body has more um, ability to burn fat. Huh instead of burning the sugar reserves, I guess. So, and the other reason people naturally lose weight doing this is because when you only eat in an eight hour window, you tend to not eat as much. Like. That seems like it would make sense. Like you just on accident. Yeah. Wouldn't make enough time to eat the same amount of food. Yeah, like if you tried, you could probably shove three meals into that eight hour period, but most people aren't going to. Most people are probably gonna end up going down to two meals a day doing this, and then they're naturally gonna lose weight. So it's easier to stick to than a diet. That being said, uh, don't think of it as a complete replacement for watching what you eat, because if you're just shoving candy and Oreos and cookies into your face during the eight hours, you're going to yeah. have zero energy and it's not gonna be good. Get those nutrients. Um, and James Clear has a great intermittent fasting guide on his website, jamesclear.com. And there's another one at Nerd Fitness, which just came out pretty recently and it's pretty lengthy. So I'll have those in the show notes if you want to look more into this thing. Uh, and then I think the Lean Gains site will also have stuff on it because he's kind of the guy that made this popular. All right, number five. And we got a whole episode on this. Yay. Get into tea. I do like tea. Uh, and this is kind of an extension of number one because it's a great way to stop drinking soda and energy drinks and crappy drinks because there are so many great flavors of tea and the herbal infusions that are called tea. Uh, but the other thing is that tea also has some health benefits. Specifically, green tea has antioxidants and lots of good stuff in it. That it does. I've heard that matcha is even better yeah. than, than sencha. I'm not exactly sure why. Do you know? Matcha is highly concentrated because it's like you mm. take really high quality, I think, gyokuro, and then they just like the whole leaf is powdered into it. So you're actually, you're digesting oh, okay. the whole leaf. So you're getting, oh, and you're probably drinking it as yeah, well. Yeah, you drink the powder too. That's So right. you're getting the whole, you're just eating a leaf. I gotcha. guess you could just buy a bunch of tea leaves and eat them. Maybe that'd be the same. Yeah, okay. I don't know, but matcha is just, the whole leaf is there. Okay. And I would like to do a video on the health benefits of green tea when I get some time to research them. Uh, but at the very least, green tea has antioxidants that are good for you, and you will be drinking less crappy drinks. Yeah. So we have a whole episode on how to get into drinking tea if it's not something for you. The one thing I'll mention here is if you want to get into green tea, read up on how to brew it properly. That will massively increase your enjoyment of it and increase the likelihood that you're not going to quit drinking it. Yeah, otherwise you don't you're want bitter get, tea. Yeah, you're going to get some bitter, gross, green sludge water and you, not good. But properly boiled, it's actually really good and really pleasant. Yeah, I think tea is a great, great thing to get into, mm -hmm. especially because it's not – it's kind of – I think green tea is the kind of drink you drink intentionally. Yes. You know, you don't yep. chug it. You're not like, this is the most – let me chug <laughs> it like a soda. Tea. 
you yeah. drink it mindfully. And maybe if you get into the habit of intaking more food and drinks like that, where you're like, I'm enjoying this because I consciously, like my mind enjoys this. Yeah. Then I, maybe that's a better state to be in in general than just my body says sugar and fat are good. That actually Put makes it in a mouth. lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense now. to me. Uh, so for anyone who wants to listen to the tea episode, that is episode 207 of this podcast. And if you go over to CIGpodcast.com slash 207, that's our short link to it. But we'll also have it in the show notes. Yeah. All right. Number six, don't worry about purity. This is a big one. But what about purity? Don't worry about it. Oh. Don't be perfect. That's hard. Whether it is, and this is going to be controversial, but whether it is a dietary choice or whether it is you sticking to intermittent fasting or whether it is whatever. Like we talk a lot on this podcast about don't make the second mistake. Don't let a mistake become a trend, but don't beat yourself up if you make a mistake. And if you, you know, you say you want to lose weight or say you want to be healthy, but you still love pizza, have pizza on Fridays. Because if you're going to tell yourself, I will never eat pizza again, you are so much more likely to fail. Yeah. If I were to tell myself I will never drink again, I'm so much more likely to fail because I'm going to be like, do I really want to go the rest of my life never doing that? And then somewhere down the, low, the line, someone's going to be like, hey, we're going to go do a fancy scotch tasting flight. And I'm like, okay, I'm quitting. But if it was 30 days, I'd be like, ah, oh, I'm 30 days. Sorry, I can't do it. You know, knowing sometime in the future I could do it. Or if it's just like, I only drink on Saturdays. Sorry, it's not Saturday. But, you know, if we want to do it on Saturday, that's fine. Yeah. So don't worry about purity. I think like you've talked a lot about this to me and possibly on this show as well. Yeah, really trying to adhere to purity in almost anything is just a terrible idea because mm -hmm. it turns all of life into some really high pressure chore. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're gonna fail. Also, it's really, really hard to make a lifelong commitment. Yep. I realize that some, some make sense, but for the most part, who am I in 10 years? I don't know. I have no clue who I am in 10 years because 10 years ago, I wasn't even close to this guy and he should not have been making promises yep. about what I'm doing. Well, in, 10 in years seven ago, years Martin has uh, no, no business in what new Martin does. In seven years, your body has replaced most of its cells. See, with I'm, a new brand, I'm a brand new guy. Brand new. So there's brand some new. that stick around, but yeah, it's always it's kind hard of to interesting imagine. to me that like your consciousness persists while cells are replaced and all these kinds of things. Yeah, that it's just it's so hard to imagine a lifelong commitment and when mm -hmm. you're when you're trying to be pure about something, it sounds like a great idea. Yeah. But it will keep you from starting it. And like say you're vegan. Okay, that's great. You should be vegan, but you shouldn't be like paralyzed with fear because you know the food that you you're eating maybe brushed an Oreo that has gelatin fragments in it well, or something. Well, Oreos are vegan, man. Wait, didn't you tell me that Oreos are technically not vegan? Ooh, this is going to start a war in the comments. Uh, well, I I, that, that, depends, I... that depends on how, how far you're going because sometimes you might be concerned that the sugar was filtered through bone char to be white. And, this mm. goes really deep. I've see, read too is, much about everything. This is the problem, right? But see, this is, this is where you've got to draw the line. And, you know, anybody can have their own different line. But, right. like, pick a point past which you're going to say, yes, technically I could go further. Yeah. And I'm not going to. You know, just – Pick any line. I don't really care how, how pure a person wants it. As long as they have a limit that isn't like 100% pure and, right. and it's reasonable for their lifestyle, yeah. it's going to work better. Because, yeah, I guess technically, 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 maybe they're not vegan depending on how you feel about the sugar. I don't know what kind of sugar they used. I, it's probably filtered that way. Or, you know, technically, I suppose you supported a company that probably also does something involving – like the web of things we're involved with is too right. big – to try to 100% anything. And when you get down to it, I mean, it's it's pretty hard to argue that, or it's pretty hard to argue against the idea that complex life sort of depends on, at some degree, ending other life. Yeah, it's like just... It, it sounds bad, but that's just kind of how it works. Like, we aren't plants that just, you know, eat sunlight and do nothing else. And I'm, even plants gonna need be one. other ecosystems to like they can't simply live on sunlight they need an atmosphere as well so yeah, are you going to be a plant we just we can't control this whole planet or yeah. like if i decide that my preferences are that i'm never going to hurt another rock 
wh- I don't get to control what this planet is made of or right. what my friends do or what my family like I, I don't get to control enough to 100% anything yeah maybe I choose not to kick rocks in the parking lot now because I'm so nice but I as but you're long gonna as, accidentally kick a rock someday yeah it's gonna happen at some point and yep. if I freak out about it I'm gonna live in such a high stress lifestyle mm-hmm. that no matter how healthy my diet is I'm probably still gonna have a stroke yep so yay for all the health benefits of too much purity. Yep. Uh, and so going back to veganism, this is a slight tangent from the pure health focus here, but the way I kind of see it, and there will always be people who get mad at me for this, but I feel that I could convince more than seven times the amount of people that I would convince to be vegan to simply give up meat one day a week. Yeah. I think you could convince a hundred times more people to do meatless Monday than to be completely vegan. And the impact of that would be better. And maybe over time, you can convince people to go two days a week, three days a week to reduce it over time. But when you when your argument is purity right now, because otherwise you're wrong and bad, you just make people defensive. And you have to realize that most people do not want to change that part of their life totally and forever. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Exactly. Basically, yeah. it's a it's a goal to attain, but if you demand it immediately, you probably can't have it. Yeah. If if you're militant, then you're never going to get support from anyone who isn't a militant person like you. But if you're willing to meet people halfway, you start making progress. And I think that this applies to many different things, right? Yeah. I could tell you, I you know, and this is something that I actually have a problem with. Like, I want Anna to work out every single day because that's kind of where I am. I'm like, everyone should exercise every single day, man. Um, But that's difficult for someone who isn't like me to start doing right away. Yeah. Right. So if I'm just like, what if it's just one day a week? What if I go with you? What if we go to this fun thing instead of like just going to the gym? The change actually happens. Like compromise is healthy. Yeah, exactly. And over time, you know, they may they may get to the next level, and from that level's vantage point, they can actually see themselves making the change to the next level. But nobody who's way down here at the base of the mountain can see themselves leaping to the top of the mountain. And well, that that is what uh, people who have a purity mindset are asking them to do. Yeah, it's the same reason that like, so when I did that first that month long thing where I was like, I'm gonna eat plant based so I can stop being picky about my food and never touching vegetables. And then I was vegetarian for two years. But mm-hmm. if that first day I had said, okay, I'm going to be vegetarian for two years, that's not going to happen. I'm going to keep yeah. pushing that off. It's scary. It's too mm-hmm. big of a change. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. So number seven, a little less heavy. The slow cooker is your friend. Buy yourself a crock pot. So this is a, a great way to do meal prep um, or just to have lots of leftovers because oh, – yeah. You can throw anything into a slow cooker and maybe not anything like red flyer wagon parts probably aren't going to cook well, but you could throw any meat in there. You could throw tofu in there. You yeah. can make chili in there. You can make stew in there. You can make all kinds of stuff. And it's a huge thing. So if you fill it up, you are making yourself dinner for four, five, six nights. Yeah, we, we easily make chili for like the whole week for both of us yep. in a crock pot. And it takes maybe 15 minutes to prep that chili. You got to cut an onion. You got to cook up some uh, beef if you want to use beef. You guys don't even use beef. Oh, no, we just dump a bunch of cans of like garbanzo beans, so lentils, yeah. beans. Just put it all literally, in there, cut an you, onion. Yeah, if you don't want to use meat, you're done. You would literally pour in tomato paste and tomato sauce, garbanzo beans, yeah. And cut up an onion, throw that in there. You could throw that on low for eight hours, leave, go do whatever you want, and you have dinner. Yeah. It's, so if it's you want, very easy. Yep. If you want a meat-based one, throw in an extra 10 minutes to brown the meat. There you go. That's yeah. it. Um, and there are so many slow cooker recipes out there. There is a subreddit for slow cooking. I think it is just r oh, cool. slash slow cooking or slow cooker. We'll have it in the show notes. Uh, there's zillions of recipes out there. So buy yourself a crock pot, make that, it's, it's a pretty cheap investment to be honest, and you'll be good to go. Um, I, at some point also want to buy an instant pot, which is a pressure cooker. Oh yeah. So for me at least, 
The only problem with the slow cooker is it's like usually an eight hour cook time and I don't want to cook in the morning to have it ready for supper. And I just, I do know there's a way around it where you can basically prep everything the night before, throw it in the fridge, and then in the morning, just throw it in the crock pot and you're good to go. But if you want to make a meal now, tonight, you can use the pressure cooker to basically do the same thing you're doing with the slow cooker, but in like 45 minutes. Oh. Like you can make a stew in 45 minutes in that pressure cooker. So I may uh, look into getting one of those at some point. That's cool. Possibly when I have a house and have more counter space. Because I already have counter like, space is quite rare, isn't it? Yeah, with my my electric kettle and my coffee stuff and the blender and just everything, there's like very little counter space anymore. So I'll, uh, I may want to get some more. All right, so number eight, and I would love for you to chime in with your own ideas here. But when you were learning to cook, learn to cook with butter, salt, pepper, and garlic. And you don't use butter, but I you do not use butter, butter, right? Or uh, oil. I like, uh, yeah, I, I liked to, I sauteed a lot of spinach with uh, fresh garlic and extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. And I, I saute, like it's a really low temperature. Yeah. So there is a smoke point you you don't want to go above. If your oil is smoking, you should probably turn it down. High heat, use peanut oil or um, but, safflower oil. Yeah, don't but you can, you can really low temperature. Like spinach doesn't need a high temperature no. to saute. So you can you can saute it in some, some good olive oil with garlic. And that was the first thing I learned to cook mm -hmm. when I was vegetarian. First thing. And I was so excited and I ate it all the time. And I was like, I'm eating yeah. a vegetable. I'm so proud of myself. Yep. I've only ever eaten meat, bread, and potatoes. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, right? Because if you just throw spinach in a pan and cook it, it's not going to well, taste very it, good. It, it honestly mostly tasted like garlic when I was eating it. Yeah. So. Throw in some freshly chopped, not, okay, if you have to go buy the pre-chopped garlic in the jar at the store, oh, fine stuff. I did stone, that I think. again. No purity here. I know Anthony Bourdain hated that kind of stuff, and in his book, he was very disdainful of people who used it. But I started with that. I will say, freshly chopping your own garlic will improve the experience a mu like a lot. Yeah. Um, but even the store-bought garlic in the jar will help. Throw that in there. Throw some salt and pepper, and if you eat butter. Uh, saute it in butter because butter makes everything better. Oh, actually, so I ran into this the other day at, at the store and I tried it and I don't know if it tastes exactly like real butter because I forgot mm -hmm. what that tastes like. But it was this coconut oil that had a couple vegetable flavorings added into it so that it was it was supposed to be really butter-like. Oh, okay. And uh, all the reviews said that it was butter-like. I trust them. It was okay. good though. Well, if you can find the coconut, coconut oil or coconut... It was coconut oil. So it's not like spreadable. It's like an oil you pour. Well, coconut oil is like solid. Oh, okay. At room temperature. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, look into well, that. depending on the room. Or if you're like me, use butter. <laughs> yeah, just um, flavor it. You there's, know. there's a section in Anthony Bourdain's book where he's just like, here's why your food doesn't taste like restaurant food. And he lists off a few things. One of them being that restaurants often use shallots, which are really tasty. Um... When I make asparagus now, I always cook it with shallots and bacon, and it's delicious. Shallots, bacon, garlic, salt, pepper, and butter. It'll yeah. make asparagus like the best thing you've ever tasted. Uh, but the other thing he said is, even those, even those, uh, I think these are his words, even those crafty Italians that extol the virtues of olive oil and, and love to publicly eschew butter, what's that going in the pan at the end? It's butter. Yep. Yeah, well, it's like so, those little things, just, even if you think they're they're bad for you. You are not going to cook if you don't cook things that you think taste good. Yep. You may for a little while, but you need to like your food. And if you're eating like 10% something in there that you don't know that's great for you, but 90% of it now is a brand new healthy food, then mm -hmm. just do it. And here's the thing about butter. It's not that unhealthy for you. Unless you're extremely lactose intolerant for some reason, it's not I, full I, of sugar. I think if you... You'd have to eat a lot, I you'd think, for a, it to be yeah. a bigger problem than not eating healthy foods. If you're just cooking with it, it's fine. Like it's not sugar, it's not carb heavy. And uh, as, as inaccurate as some of the science I think was in the latter half of that Good Calories, Bad Calories book by Gary Tobbs, uh, the first half of the book is an excellent takedown of all the faulty research that had been done in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, basically blaming dietary fat for uh, body fat gain and for cardiac problems. Well, I think all the fat was vilified for years, but really it's the sugar and carbs that we're all eating. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy how much we try to focus on on stuff that's been around forever. Yeah. 
you know, because all these cultures, they have like traditional foods they've been eating for centuries mm -hmm. that have been keeping their people healthy. Yeah. And, and we're just like, yeah, but obviously all those people were secretly poisoned and they didn't know. <laughs> it certainly couldn't be all these sodas. It, could, it certainly couldn't be the, the processed stuff that's really, really recent. Yeah. Because, but I guess like here, here in America, it doesn't feel like we have that deep of a food. We don't, we're not that old. As nope. a country, we don't have a huge food culture telling us what's my great, 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 great. I don't have any idea what she ate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, unless you're in, you know, you can trace so your roots like, back to the home country and see what they that's ate. That's true. But I could trace it that far. But if I trace it as far as I could probably figure out right now, I'd probably just end up around the Great Depression where food was rationed anyway. Mm. So where's where's the, like, instructions on what to eat? There is, like, a 96-year-old woman on YouTube who has a channel called uh, Depression Cooking. And it's... She just does videos on recipes that they made during yeah. the Great Depression. It's really cool. And I don't know, just like to see her face light up when she's just like, oh, we're going to make something with, with a little bit of meat today. Who? Like, Very we never had that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, right? Um, so that's a great resource. Speaking of going back to your roots and tracing your lineage, uh, look up how to make borscht. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, it's a it's a Ukrainian it's recipe. borscht in your blood. I don't think I have any Ukrainian blood in me, but my great, great grandfather, while being German, apparently came from like some area that was in Russia. Uh, he was a borscht farmer. He was a borscht farmer, I guess. That was, I don't, so I don't know. There's, there's a whole lot of like borscht in my family lineage, but I did look it up and I made it and it is wonderful. And it is another one of those things that you can make a ton of and have dinner for like five days. Yeah, lots of lots of like soups and so stews and all all of those things are really yeah. good. Yeah, and it's nothing but like healthy stuff. It's just a bunch of vegetables, essentially, and I you can cook it with meat if you want to, and then uh, you put in sour cream hmm. when you actually eat it, and it just makes it Interesting. delicious. I wouldn't have guessed to put that in like a. Well, soup sour cream thing. is also great in chili. Oh, sour I cream guess. makes chili. For me, at least. Didn't know. Yep, it's so good. Uh, yeah, you, you're not much of a dairy guy, so nope. so you don't know these things, but I do it's not. real good. Anywho, I think that does it for this episode. That is my list of ways to improve your diet. Obviously, there are going to be things you could do that are not on this list, but if you put some of these things in action, I think you're going to find yourself with more energy, more time, yeah. healthier constitution. Yeah, uh, and and even even if you spend a little more time cooking than you thought you did, if you have more energy the rest of the day, it's worth it. Yeah, and also, you know, the majority of like human culture has been figuring out like how to f feed yourself for a long time. Yep, it's an important part of your life. If it has to take a little bit of time, I think it deserves it. It's how yep. you're alive. Yep, Wait, exactly. It's it's gonna be okay. It's your fuel. You know, we don't put like. Capri Sun in the car engine to make it run. Like you put the stuff that makes it run as good as possible. Yeah. Uh, so do that to yourself as well. Your body's more important Don't than your car engine. Don't drink a ton engine. of Capri Sun. That's true, yeah. Cut out the Capri Sun. Full stop. Not for your car, not for you. Except for maybe like sometimes when you want to be nostalgic. Yeah. Do you remember when we used to do Halo 3 nights? Well, Lincoln yeah, Park. That's, that's great. Lincoln Park, Halo 3 a can of game fuel that we drink like half of and that's gross. Yeah, we should just get and one Doritos. can and like pour it into shot glasses or something. Yes. <laughs> just that's what we should do. Game fuel one, shots. One, <laughs> one can of game fuel. That Doritos still tastes pretty good. But I don't want to eat They make either. my mouth feel gross, so I don't want to eat too many of them. True. And they do make your Xbox controllers but all greasy, which while nostalgic unacceptable. is gross. Unacceptable. Yeah. If it gets in there, I don't know how to <laughs> clean it anymore. Yeah. Uh, anyway... This is episode, what, 220? Yeah. 220. So, cigpodcast.com slash, 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 yep. 220. If you want to find the show notes for this episode, or if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, then uh, you can go down to the description and you should find that link. We're going to have everything that I said was going to be in the show notes, in the show notes, and maybe some other things, including a link for how to subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts if you have an iPhone or on uh, Google Podcasts or whatever you happen to use. If you have an Android phone or something else, we would love it if you subscribe to this show. It's a great way to get it on the go when you're at the gym or cooking food on Sunday during your meal prep time Ooh. or folding laundry. I'm good at those segues, you know? Yeah. I, just, I'm, I, got, I got that balance, Apparently. right? 
I mean, yeah, that is a podcast is actually a great idea to get you through some meal prep. Yeah, it is. I should do that. That's with... what I, every time I cook, I listen to a podcast or an audio book. It's well, just my thing. Even I listen to a couple audio books now. Ooh. Oh, yeah, because you're using for... Because they're uh, French. French practice. And it's Harry Potter. So if I miss That's a few right. sentences, which I do all the time, I don't care. Yep. No, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, and if you are enjoying this podcast, a great way to support it would be to go over to Apple Podcasts and give us a rating and review. That is a great way to just bump us up the rankings. It shows people that people are enjoying the show, helps get it out to a new audience. So thank you so much if you do that. Last but not least, if you are looking for books that we recommend, stuff for your dorm or apartment, stuff you should bring to college, or apps that we recommend, all of that can be found over at collegeinfogeek.com slash resources. We've got, at, the, at this time, uh, at least three different resources pages Yeah, for you to peruse at your own will, and we'll probably have more in the future. I want to have a laptop guide at some point. I'm just like not enough of a laptop nerd at a lower price yeah, I'm, I'm on like know. a six-year-old laptop. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's working just fine. Buy a six-year-old 2012 Whatever. MacBook get, Air. Get to them resources <laughs> and peruse these pages. Yeah, peruse them. Hashtag peruse these pages. There you go. Uh, as always, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you in next week's episode. Stay cute. What does he do immediately after we <laughs> You you hit the table, Tom? Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you broke my art.